Today on Teach Me How to Vegan. All those meals, they, you know, kind of, most of them rely on some faux meats Mm -hmm. a little bit. Or, you know, we gave some variations that don't have faux meats. For the last three, we're going to shift gears and talk about meals that don't use any faux meats at all. Yeah. So it's really easy. You just have to use vegetable broth. Yep, you have to use vegetable broth. And this time I was actually randomly out of carrots. And so it was just onion and celery in the stuffing. And it looked really weird to me because I typically (laughs) like to add carrot, the orange. I like that pop of orange in. And sometimes I'll shred a carrot and I'll just do that. Sometimes I chop it into little cubes. Usually it's shredding because I'm trying to be quick. And for me, it just adds. I like the color. I don't know if it adds flavor. I'm sure it adds nutrients, but... (laughs) <laughs> that's it's, not what's important <laughs> in this case apparently <laughs> it's mainly the color because it, it did it was still really tasty it tasted good the stuffing but it just looked different without the carrot yeah welcome to teach me how to vegan a podcast where we explore how to switch to a vegan diet i'm tony a health educator fitness instructor and plant-based eating program manager for animal protection of new mexico i'm mickey a stay-at-home homeschooling mom and vegan cook who likes to play in the kitchen our family stopped eating meat in 2007 And we went vegan in 2016. Now we like to share with others what we've learned. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. So we're going to talk about even more meal ideas. This is kind of an extension on the whole like what do you eat type of thing. Or if you're new to plant-based or vegan and you're kind of wondering like what will I eat? What will my meals look like? Mm -hmm. So we're going to give... 15 new ideas we already did an episode with 15 cheap and easy meals as part of our vegan on a budget yeah and so now we're extending that with more meals these might cost a little more than five dollars you know yep to make but it gives you an idea of what your daily meals your daily eating could look like yeah being vegan yeah when people ask me what do you eat i ask them well what do you eat and then they tell me and i say yeah I, i eat that too burritos pizza burgers fries tacos yeah i eat all that too right and so this is going to be there's some of all that mixed in and we'll tell you sort of how we do them right how we make them what products we like to use what ingredients mm-hmm. we like to use to create some of these meals yeah so a lot of them are meals that we grew up on or that we typically ate on a omnivorous diet or a standard american diet and we've adapted right yes so here we go first Span up, into your repertoire yeah first up is our eldest's probably favorite meal Burgers mm-hmm. and fries. Burgers and fries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So most people think either you're not going to have burgers anymore or it's going to be like veggie burgers. Yeah. And that is not the case. Yep. It is And oh, black bean burgers. Those are usually pretty good. But sometimes I just want a meaty burger. Yeah. Black, well, we got you. Black bean burgers are so 2005. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Those are so five years ago. <laughs> right. So... There's a couple ways to do just burgers and fries. We have them maybe once a week, once every other week, because, mm-hmm. yeah, Constantine would have, we would have them every day if it was up to him. Yes. So, every couple of days, he would totally be down for that. At least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our go to is Beyond Burgers. Yes. That's our favorite. Yeah. And we tend, we get it at Costco because that still is currently the best deal for price versus quantity. Right. But they did just recently come out in Walmart. Yes. So they're now available in Walmart for a pretty good pretty price. Pretty close, yeah. yeah. So we do love those. We love making the fries from scratch, just yes. chopping potatoes and doing them in the air fryer. That's our favorite. That's our go-to. Yeah. And then, of course, adding whatever veggies you want to your mm, burger. Toppings. But and Teen always does barbecue sauce on his. Always. He's He likes barbecue burgers. So. Yeah. But we also really like the Morning Star Meat Lovers oh, Burgers. Man. And their cheeseburger. Because, and their cheeseburger. Yes. They have a vegan cheeseburger. cheeseburger. And it's got like little chunks of cheese in the patty. Yeah. And it's really delicious. These are so good and highly underrated. Yes. The and meat they're one, cheaper. They are. Because I think it's four for like $5. Yeah. Whereas the Beyond Burgers tend to be like two patties for five dollars yeah and i think they're like 650 for four of them okay for the morning star which compared to beyond and impossible is pretty cheap yeah but yeah the meat lovers one is really it's like a quarter pounder and super underrated like you said and the cheeseburger is really delicious also 
a uh, little side note every time we do beyond burgers our dog otis gets super excited as soon as he smells it yes. because every time we cook them what i do is after we i cook the burgers in a pan on the stovetop and then when i remove them you know there's some of that grease yeah and so i'll throw Maybe his some food. little crunchy crumbles or yeah, something yeah i'll put his the... food in the pan and mix it around and then serve it and it's like the biggest treat ever yeah. for him so <laughs> as soon it. as he as soon as the burgers hit the pan he smells it and he gets he knows tail goes and he gets all excited <laughs> so little anecdote a little side story for for dog lovers yes uh but then also you know those are our go-to like meaty burgers we do also like the costco veggie burgers. yes those are pretty tasty as veggie burgers go they're good yeah they, they don't taste good. like a meat burger of course but they're good we enjoy yeah. them and we also have cut them up and put them on salad yes like a just you know it's you like kind of like a, make it's, your, it's a a burger salad yeah it's like a burger it's like salad. all the things like we did a burger salad one day it's all the things we would have put on a burger just on a bed of lettuce instead of in a bun yeah and it was really good it was really good actually yeah. we were all digging it pickles and all it was mm-hmm. i was really surprised yeah <laughs> and it kind of helped us eat more lettuce yes more greens than we would have had in a burger yeah. so that was good yeah and i think the is it morning star or boca that has like the original grilled veggie that was Boca. It was Boca. Those ones are pretty and good. Those ones are pretty good as and, veggie burgers go. And also. a lot lower priced. Yeah. yeah. They're called the American Flame Grilled. That one. Yes. So that was our go to before we had Beyond and Impossible and yeah. Morningstar and all these fancy things, you know, quote unquote, way back in the day <laughs> when we were vegetarian <laughs> like 10 years ago. Yeah. It was the Flame Grilled Boca, Boca burgers. burgers. Mm-hmm. Those were good ones. Yeah. And we got them recently. Remember? And Constantine was like, these are good. <laughs> he yeah. didn't they weren't bad he wasn't like he was into them but it wasn't like it wasn't like there oh were my no gosh. beyond yeah like once you've had beyond it, you know they're not that exciting but they're really good for what they are yes so burgers and fries yep you still have them in your life that's a good kind of go-to meal especially for treats second is pizza yeah and that's our go-to on friday nights. nights yep we do friday night it's friday night movie night and we always have pizza and we did mention pizza in the vegan on a budget because we were talking about the cheaper version. Mm-hmm. So we're going to tell you our treat version that yes. costs a little more than five dollars to make. Yeah. But is worth it when we want the treat. right? Yeah. So we we have a homemade dough that's like a 10 minute pizza dough. And it really is awesome. Sometimes we use it to make breadsticks even. Yeah. You throw some spices and nooch in it and you've got like a cheesy breadstick. Yeah. We've but talked about this dough quite a bit because it's fantastic. It's really good. But then we get our vegan cheese and we do some vegan cheese on it. And then we also do the Morning Star Italian sausage crumbles on it. Mm-hmm. And it is whew, next level. We it haven't takes it up a notch. It, yeah. yeah. Like it's literally every week. And we've gotten it down to where one bag of crumbles and one bag of cheese can be split between two Fridays. So Mm -hmm. because we go grocery shopping roughly every two weeks, we get some food. We can have a bag on each trip or we can get a bag of each on our grocery shopping trip. And then next two weeks, we've got Friday night. Right. And what kind of cheese shreds is it that we use? When I do the Walmart pickup order, it is... The Go Veggie Shreds, Yes, right? the Go Veggie Shreds. So we buy one bag of Go Veggie Shreds, one bag of the Morningstar Italian yep. sausage crumbles, and that's enough for two pizzas for two Fridays. Because we make like a big rectangle. Yeah, we make we, it on our we, big baking sheet. We make sheet. it on our big baking sheet because and it's that good. <laughs> cutting it four ways, that's usually a good amount for us. Yeah, it's a good Friday night. You know, when you just, it's, it's Friday night movie night mm-hmm. pizza. Yeah. You know? So it's good stuff. So that's a, another idea that we enjoy. Mm-hmm. And of course, Daya shreds would work. Any other vegan shreds would work if you mm-hmm. have a preference for them. Of course. But I just, you know, where I get the grocery pickup so that I don't have to go in very much during this pandemic. That's the vegan cheese they carry. So that's what we get. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's like vegan pepperoni. Yeah. For that are into that. It's, We've it's done quite that before good. and that's pretty good. We just... We're just into those sausage crumbles. They're, I think. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> so, next on the list is tacos. Mm-hmm, one of my favorites. Right, and so there's different ways you can do this. Yes, we sometimes like to make them with the crumbles, mm-hmm. with the Morning Star crumbles, mm-hmm. or Gardein. Or Gardein. Those are the yeah. One those, of those are our two. two our two main ones. The Morning Star typically has a value pack that's a little bit bigger. 
than the Gardein. Mm-hmm. And so when that's available, I tend to choose that for our tacos because we really like tacos and we want the bigger bag with more crumbles. <laughs> yeah. And we've got some, some hungry growing children. Yes, we do. We want to make sure we get enough. <laughs> yeah. And so I just make the crumbles. Sometimes I'll put in, I'll saute up some onions and green peppers and put that in. Sometimes I'll even do a little potato. Like if I can only find the smaller bag to maybe stretch it a little bit, I'll put in onion, green pepper, potato, and then put the crumbles in. And I do my own, you can buy a little bag of taco seasoning, but I just throw in garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, cumin, and some pepper if you like it spicier you can throw in chili powder sometimes i'll do a smidge of water but really i like to throw in a can of tomato sauce Mm -hmm. with all the spices and then sort of let it cook down to where it's not like saucy saucy it's it gets like thicker Mm -hmm. and then that's our filling Mm -hmm. with all the toppings and sometimes we'll either have cheese sauce made that we use with this or if we have extra shreds or oh, we accidentally have a half bag of shreds still. We'll put it on the tacos too. Mm -hmm. We like to serve it with a side of Spanish rice, Mm -hmm. sometimes calabacitas, sometimes Mm -hmm. papas. Yep. And then whatever. And then sometimes if we have beans left over from something else, we'll make double decker tacos where you take a soft taco, a soft tortilla, and you put some, you mash up your beans and you put the beans on the tortilla and then you thinly on it. Yep. Spread them thinly. And then you wrap that around your hard shell taco and fill it with your crumbles and whatever other toppings you want. And it's super fun to have a double decker. It is. The boys love it. They get so excited for it. So tacos in that regard. But we also do... Another version of tacos with a filling that's made with lentils and rice. Yes. And I'm going to let you talk about that because, again, you're the expert on this (laughs) particular recipe that I'm realizing I've never made myself. Yes. Well, and and it's really nice because this is a crock pot recipe. So this is one that you can set and let it be. And I think it takes about four hours in the crock pot. And it's like lentils, brown rice, some onion and spices and that's it and you let it cook and then it makes this really great filling and this is another one that's really good in hard or soft tacos with all your regular toppings Mm -hmm. i feel like one time we had some of that left over and we only had a little bit and that's what we did to make some double deckers you could do that that, and then we had crumbles inside Mm -hmm. so you can really like you can do double deckers with either but this is really, it's really tasty. And so it's its not more expensive because it's lentils and rice. So it's cheaper so to go that route, So that's pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, and it's really, really delicious. Yeah. Bonus when you make tortillas from scratch. Yes. <laughs> that's your guys' favorite. <laughs> that's our favorite day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And then there's also chicken tacos. Yes, which we recently had. Which we recently had. For we some like, reason, why I've, have we not been doing these our whole life? Yeah, I ha- we had some chicken strips, some like Morningstar chicken strips, and I did some green pepper and red onion strips with it, and it was really good. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna try it in a taco, and oh my gosh, it hit the spot. All of us were just like, this is so great. So don't forget about chicken tacos. So good. Yeah, yes. it was. It really, was good really in delicious. wraps too. Yes. Yeah. And that one, the Morning Star chicken comes lightly seasoned. I actually didn't do anything else to it. I just sauteed the red onion and green pepper with it, and then some lettuce, some pico de gallo is what we put on top of it, mm-hmm. and it was so so delicious. Some homemade pico. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna want some crunchy talk, ta- crunchy chicken, chicken tacos, tacos soon. Yep. Mm. And double deckers. You made those sound really good. (laughs) I think we need to make that a point. Okay. (laughs) All right. Next is enchiladas. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of different ways you could do this. People have a million different ways they like to do theirs. Yes. We have a way that we like to do ours vegan, which Mickey just tried one day. You know, you just remember you were like, I think this would be good. Yeah. And I was like, when it was one of those classic like, okay, sure, let's try it. (laughs) And then it was super good. And so we just make the cheese sauce Mm -hmm. that we've talked a lot about, this homemade cheese sauce. Then uh, use some Morningstar chicken strips Mm -hmm. and you cook them in the pan and then kind of break them up into smaller pieces. pieces, So it's more like little... Little chicken chunks. Chicken chunks or Mm -hmm. chicken shreds or whatever. And then you just layer that with corn tortillas and green chili in a baking dish and then bake it. Yep. 
And it was amazing to me because it they taste really good. They have the right texture without the need to fry the tortillas. Yes. Most people, when you make enchiladas, you fry the tortillas ahead of time and then you layer it with cheese. And yeah. Whatever meat you're going to do you and got stuff. All and chili. All sorts of good fat and grease in there. Yeah. And that's kind of <laughs> what gives it the that texture. But the, because the we're using the cheese sauce, mm-hmm. you know, it, the tortillas kind of soak up some of that moisture. I don't know. It works really great. Yeah. It's the way to go. We actually have a, we recently did a demonstration video for this for an event. So we have a demo video on our website about how to assemble it. But it's so easy. It is really easy. And so good. Highly recommend it. And the kids love it. They eat it up. They really every do. Time. Every time. And we kind of fight over the leftovers. Yes. Sometimes because it's. After that demo video, there was only like two good size slices left. And that was a whole lot of fun the next day <laughs> when only two of the four of us could have it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So don't forget about enchiladas. You could also make them, you know, if you don't want to use the chicken strips, you mm-hmm. could just do cheese because yep. cheese enchiladas are, you know, a thing, just green chili and cheese or red chili and cheese, whichever kind of chili you want you could also put just like sauteed squash in them yeah like calabacita. or like calabacitas mm-hmm. and just layer Enchiladas. it with that instead uh or you could even you could do black beans mm-hmm. me personally i like if we're gonna do black bean then i want red, red chili. chili yes <laughs> you yep, know i know <laughs> or if we you could do crumbles with red chili and you yeah. have red chili quote unquote beef enchiladas yep or you can have green chili chicken yeah so f- so i don't like to do red chili chicken or green chili beef that doesn't work for no, me but he, it might work has, for you do your thing he has very specific <laughs> requests as far as enchiladas go i'm not picky in a lot of things so <laughs> i'm glad you give me that yeah <laughs> yes i know yeah so remember enchiladas they go really good served with pinto beans mm-hmm. that's my, the best side to serve with them or spanish rice yeah or if you do like green chili chicken enchiladas and then calabacitas and pinto beans on the side, that's like your favorite. That is, yeah. That is like on point for favorite. you. Mm-hmm. Totally. So that's good. And yeah, I like like black bean and corn red chili enchiladas. Mm-hmm. That's is good. really good. Yeah. All right. Next is something that I never had until I moved here to New Mexico. So this is not a thing in Miami. Or, or that I had heard of, apparently. yeah, that I had ever been, you know, traveling up and down the East Coast with my family and stuff. So, like, anyway, Frito Pies. Mm-hmm. So, if you don't know what a Frito Pie is, it is delicious, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a staple now. You take a um, Fritos, the chip Fritos, put it in a bowl, and you layer it with, usually it's like beef and red chili and beans and... Some toppings are onion, lettuce, tomato, cheese, and you go to town. Mm -hmm. And it's really simple. It's really easy. And it's delicious. And it's really easy to make for a crowd. Yeah. So it tends to be like Super Bowl Sunday, it's Frito Pies. Or like basketball games, it's Frito Pies. Or sometimes birthday parties, it's Frito Pies. Growing up, so many birthday parties were Were Frito Frito Pies. pies. Like... (laughs) so many times yeah but no one complains because they're so good they're so good yeah and so the way we make them vegan is originally we just left out the beef and cheese Mm -hmm. and so we just have we have fritos we have pinto beans we have red chili and the toppings onion lettuce tomato sometimes if we have cheese sauce we'll throw the cheese sauce on sometimes we get vegan cheese shreds and that was a treat and the red chili can be super simple Yes. Because when you buy the Bueno brand red chili powder, there's a recipe on the package. You know, the last time I bought some, oh, the recipe wasn't there. Lying t- they stopped ta- they stopped putting it on there. We should we'll double check, but if the red if it's not on there, we'll write it out for you somewhere. Yeah. It's easy to remember cuz it's 2 3 4. Yes. It's 2 tablespoons of oil, 3 tablespoons of flour, 4 tablespoons of chili. Yes. And then some 2 cups of water. Yes. And some garlic and, and salt. Five pounds of garlic. <laughs> <laughs> Just Not kidding. quite. <laughs> However much. And then garlic and salt yep, to taste. To taste. And maybe onion powder. But it's really it's really basic yes. and simple. Yeah. And, and it's and vegan by default. The recipe they used to apparently put on there is vegan by default. Yes. And l- some people use the chili pods and boil those down and then blend it. And so there's different ways to make red chili. But if you've not made it before... 
the red chili powder is a is a good entryway into the world of red chili. And it can be so simple. Yeah. It can be simple. And yeah. it's really good. So we do that. And then one time for, I think, an event for your work, we added crumbles to the red chili. Uh, probably either Gardein or Morningstar, one right. of our go-to crumbles. And brand. it was so, so good Mm -hmm. so that's like the like when we just want to like okay have a quick meal and it's going to be frito pies we might not have crumbles we're fine without it but if we want like a treat for our frito pies we'll add the crumbles and get some vegan cheese and it's really 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 delicious Mm -hmm. i was surprised at how much it added to it do you know what i mean yeah me too i really was because we were totally happy and still are totally happy with it without the crumbles and without the cheese. So those are just nice extra treats. Yeah. And sometimes when we have that cheese sauce left yes. over in the fridge, we'll put a little cheese sauce yeah. on the Frito Pies as well. And that's really good too. So you might see a theme with these meals we're talking about that you're going to want to learn this cheese sauce yeah. <laughs> and have it on hand because it, it's a nice addition to yeah, a lot of Yeah, it's really good. I think even one time we put it on... Do we put it on a burger on burgers one yeah, time? We and did. it was so good. With those French fried green chilies. Yes. And, and so it was like a green chili cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It was good. It was good. So that's Frito Pies. Yes. Next is one of your favorites. Oh my gosh, one of my favorites, yes. Philly cheesesteaks. Which you would think that would be hard to do, but right. it's it's really not. And we found I think the perfect combo that tastes really good. Yes. So you can make it with seitan. So if you want like the strips like the Philly cheesesteak typically has, you can you can do seitan and that's really delicious. The trick is to make sure you have, if you like the green pepper and onion, saute that up and have that on there. And then the chow cheese. For me. This is key. I think it's key. The I chow agree. cheese. Because that one is closest to, I used to always get my Philly cheesesteaks with provolone. Mm-hmm. And so for me, the chow cheese is the most reminiscent of that. Now, I think Dea makes a provolone now that might be really good on oh, it. Oh, that is, we've, it's good. Have we've we done tried that? it by itself. We've tried it by itself, but not on a sandwich. But not so on a sandwich. I'm scared though, because the chow is just so good. The chow good. is really so good. The chow with the crumbles, the way you make it with the peppers. Yeah. I don't want to stray from So it. the way I typically make it is with beef crumbles, the like Gardein or Morningstar crumbles. And like I said, we typically buy the Morningstar because it's a bigger bag. So but I think I've grown to like them better, especially yeah. for this one. For this. I feel like Morningstar is the way to go. Yeah. So I just saute up some pepper and onion, throw the crumbles in there, and I don't really add anything to it because I think the green pepper and onion give it enough flavor, maybe a little bit of garlic, and then the chow cheese. And then you just throw that on a hoagie, and it's so, so good. Mm -hmm. So good. The boys are super into it as well. Yeah, everybody's always like happy when I'm like, I really want Philly cheesesteaks. And they're like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) There's no complaints. And this this next one is one that is one of your favorites Mm -hmm. that you grew up on and love so much and recently discovered how to make and you myself. make these ones yes. yeah so rellenos yes green chili rellenos mm-hmm. and i never made them before we were vegan i never made them before like last month because <laughs> <laughs> they're just so labor intensive it's like yeah. you take a whole green chili and you stuff it with cheese and you dip it in batter and you fry it and so you have to like make the batter it's just like it just sounded like a lot like way too much yeah. and it is like a lot i've seen my mom make them once in a while for me when I was a kid, like on my birthday when I wanted them. And it's Mm -hmm. like, that's why you only get them once a year because it's really a lot. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, I went, I checked out this webinar that Vegan Outreach did and this amazing chef, Yannette, I forgot her last name, but she made it so easy. And Mm -hmm. then I was like, I can, I can do that. It's such an easy process actually he said i think i can be done with that yeah it's you just use aquafaba which is the liquid from chickpeas, chickpeas mm-hmm. and m- literally mix that with flour and that's your batter super easy like how easy is that and then you can make it as complicated or as not as you want you know like i tried to you know get the cheese inside of it and all of that but the last time I made them, I was like, forget all that. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, you, no, we put avocado in. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying avocado. But I was like, you know what? It don't need to be all that. 
Right. I think I put avocado inside, but with some of them, because they were falling apart or, or I was, I don't remember. Yeah, I was like, forget it. They weren't staying in their like. Sh- Here's what shape. I'm going to do. I'm just going to dip the chilies in the batter. I'm going to fry them and then I'm going to serve it with avocado on top and drizzle some of this surprise, surprise cheese, cheese sauce. sauce. <laughs> <laughs> that we have so yeah. i don't have to try and get the cheese inside and melt it and all that drama yes. just pour the cheese on top with some avocado for that yummy like fat and texture uh-huh. and flavor oh my and god and t- you know garnish with lettuce and tomato <sighs> y'all <sighs> <laughs> and again the kids the, ate it i know up. i was surprised i thought i was gonna do all this two hours in the kitchen just for me yeah because because i because you like spicy. Fortune can do spicier than Teen and I. But sometimes if it's too spicy, Teen and I literally can't eat stuff. And so it was kind of a gamble to go for Rayanos at that point. Yeah. But like oh you- my God, they were so, so good. Now we did get to the point where the chilies were too hot. So like Teen and I were eating like the bottom ends. But and then I- you guys were eating the top ends. Yeah. But holy moly. But they I could were tell so how good, good they were because they were so hot and you guys were still eating them. Yes. Like- <laughs> sweating your eyes are all red and i was like these must be really good because you guys are still eating yeah so i just can't believe how easy it was and so the second time because that first time you used green chilies Mm -hmm. and the second time we tried what was it poblano peppers and they were they were a little bit easier so the poblanos were not as spicy as the green chilies yeah green chili is really hit or miss yes and the labels they put on it is so subjective. Yeah. Because we're here in New Mexico. When people say it's hot, you don't know you don't if know. that's like Taco Bell hot sauce hot or if it's like it's going to burn your tongue off hot. Yeah, it totally It is so subjective. Yeah. And I or can't, when people say mild, mild, again, it might burn your tongue off. It might taste like a bell pepper. Who knows? Yeah. It depends on who's telling you. Yeah. It's so, so funny when you go to the restaurant. Is it really spicy? And the waiter's <laughs> like, no, not really. And then you get it and it's like super spicy. And you're like, okay, that was not <laughs> helpful. Thank you. So we've gotten it to the point that uh, Tony has to taste the chili first. And then I t- like, can I eat this or do I need to have it on the side? Like, yeah. how do I? <laughs> so with like, yeah, with hatch green chili, it's always a gamble. Those poblano peppers were not, they're not as much of a gamble. Yeah. Towards the end. Like the second one and like nearer to the stem, they were getting too hot for Teen and I, but we could eat more of it. Yeah. And it's because it's so yeah. good. We just wanted to keep eating it. And and so the thing is, I like the green chili ones better. Yeah. Only because that's what I grew up on. That's more like New Mexican. Yeah. Making the rellenos with hatch green chili. The poblano peppers is more of like the traditional Mexican way of making rellenos. So mm-hmm. it's just a, it's a preference thing. They're both good. They're so delicious. The poblano peppers were a little bit easier to work with. They're just like bigger and like meatier. Like like for thicker. For lack of another word. Yeah. <laughs> So I would highly recommend people to try that. Now, earlier I said I exaggerated like two hours in the kitchen. I think it did take me a long time because I roasted them. Like I bought fresh peppers yes. and roasted them on the stovetop and peeled them. Mm-hmm. And like it can be a process to do all of that for sure, but totally worth it. It was worth it. And if you get the chili already roasted and seeded, then it's It'll cake. be quick. It's really fast. Yeah. So highly recommend that and serve them with pinto beans, of course. Yes. <laughs> Because that's the way to go. All right. So All right. next is a really big go-to meal for us. Yes. Which is nachos. Nachos. And we do it a lot. Mm-hmm. And surprise, surprise, <laughs> cheese sauce and pinto beans. That cheese sauce. <laughs> yeah. And pinto beans. And pinto beans. And because we know if we have the cheese sauce on hand or we, we're good at making it pretty quickly. Yeah. So we well, just have to put the beans on and make sure those are ready on time. Right. And... We tend to like, we're like, oh, we really want nachos. So we'll make a huge batch of nacho of cheese sauce so that we can have it with nachos. And then we have a lot of leftovers also. Right. So we can keep eating it mm-hmm. with all the other recipes we keep talking about <laughs> with cheese sauce. <laughs> yep. And then with nachos, we tend to like pinto beans and we just do, it's typically pinto beans. Sometimes we've done black beans Mm -hmm. and then all the toppings, lettuce, tomato, onion, jalapeno, olives. Sometimes when, when we black olives, we pull them out, Mm -hmm. but you could add, you could do crumbles on your nachos too. And then Mm -hmm. you could have beefy nachos. Absolutely. We just never do because we just like the beans so much. Right. And we are pretty good at trying to, to always have tortilla chips on hand specifically for nachos yeah because we go to it so 
often because we always have a huge thing of pinto beans and we throw them in the instant pot and we'll make a batch of pinto beans and make a batch of cheese sauce and i've gotten really good at always having jalapenos on hand yep so and i love the kirkland brand organic tortilla yes, chips you from do. costco i'm kind of a tortilla chip snob because <laughs> those ones are so good yeah he really really likes those <laughs> but you could do chicken the chicken strips you could do the crumbles you could try seitan you know there's all sorts of ways to sort of quote unquote beef up your nachos mm-hmm. nice use of words there Thanks. i thought you'd appreciate mm-hmm. that so but yeah nachos are are good and that's a good one too like sometimes when you just want to sit and like you know watch a game or something and you want that sort of like atmosphere of like watching a sports Mm -hmm. event nachos are a good thing Mm -hmm. to do for that as well and frito pies frito pies and nachos go-to's for sure yeah so the next thing i have no idea what to call it so i call it the chicken tortilla thing (laughs) because (laughs) we were talking about it earlier well, you know what I'm talking about when I, I ask do. for that. Every so does time. Teen. Yeah. Ev- and he loves it. Yes. And this was because my long term memory is like phenomenal. Yeah. It's scary good. Because he's like, you have a recipe, right? No, of course not. <laughs> Who are you talking to? So like you literally just wing it every time. Yeah, yeah. Because the original recipe that I got is that older than teen. It was. He's yeah. 13. I probably found this recipe randomly somewhere a t- in a magazine. It was like years 16 ago. years ago. And for some reason, I have no idea why, we used to get these craft magazines. Craft would send us magazines. Yeah. And they had recipes in them. And I don't know. I used to flip through them. And there was this recipe for this chicken tortilla thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we tried it and it was so good. It's so good. And yeah. so it became a staple for us. And then we kind of like fell off with it. Yeah. We went vegetarian. And then fairly recently, you thought of trying it with yeah. the Morningstar yeah, strips. I think, I think a couple years ago. Strips, and after we went vegan. you recreated it amazingly. Yeah, it's pretty perfect, actually. <laughs> so you're going to have to write up that recipe uh, because... Yes, we'll write that up. <laughs> so what it is, is you take chicken strips. I like the Morningstar chicken strips. And I just saute those up, of course onion and green pepper or whatever pepper you can do whatever color pepper you want and then once those are cooked up I throw in some usually frozen corn and let that sort of heat up and cook together as well and then you sprinkle in and use whatever seasonings really it's just onion and garlic is the main thing and then you sprinkle in some flour to make it thick and then you pour in some broth to make a roux and like a creamy roux and then you tear up flour tortillas and mix that in Mm -hmm. and then you pour in some salsa and then you let it sit for a little bit because the chicken's already cooked your vegetables are already cooked so you don't have to really cook it anymore you don't have to simmer it it's super easy and then you let it sit a little bit but then the flour tortillas get like puffy Mm -hmm. and it's hard to explain yeah it's it's almost reminiscent of like a chicken and dumpling recipe but it's it's different and it's really, really It's like delicious. a New Mexican version of chicken and dumplings. <laughs> yes, it's a New Mexican version of chicken and dumplings. But it's really, really yummy. Yeah. But and sorry. Teen, teen remembered it and, and he'll ask for it every so often. And it's another one that like I can just wing. You know, like when you can make things really quickly and you just you just throw it all together, that's another one that I can do. So if I have the stuff in the house, sometimes I'll just I'm just gonna do that real quick for lunch or dinner. Yeah. And it's always really yummy. Chicken tortilla thing. Chicken tortilla thing. <laughs> <laughs> Super good. Yep. All right. So another idea, and this one's a little bit more involved. Yes. I'm is. calling this our fake giving meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's basically like what you would think of as a typical Thanksgiving meal. Yeah. But just making it for dinner. Because <laughs> sometimes Mickey likes to do that. I do. And I randomly. Out of nowhere. <laughs> she'll just go in the kitchen and tear it up and just work it for an hour. <laughs> with, I don't know. It's a really fast how much, how quick she throws this together. And get everything on the table. And then before we know it, we're eating this feast. Yeah. So, but it it seems very elaborate, but it's kind of not as elaborate as you think it is on the surface, right? Or am I making that up? It's kind of elaborate. Are you just that good? You might be. I'll (laughs) I'll give you that. You probably are. Thanks. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's funny because the other night I made it. I mm-hmm. made Thanksgiving or feast meal sometimes is what the boys call it. And teen came in, oh, are we having a feast? Are we having the feast meal? I was like, yeah, yes. <laughs> and so it's, I typically do it when I have the Gardein turkey cutlets in the freezer. The breaded. The breaded cutlets mm-hmm. in the freezer. And so it's the breaded cutlets. And then I will make mashed potatoes. I make stuffing. I make green bean casserole. And I figure out a quick roll. And this and last. Gravy, of course. And gravy. And I make gravy. And this last time I had a can of like candy yams in the garage from somewhere. And so I did that as well. But it is kind of a lot. And so you have to juggle just right. So this time I started with stuffing and then got that in the oven to do its little crisping. And then I did green bean casserole and got that in the oven to do its little crisping. And then I did mashed potatoes you can throw in the instant pot if you have one to make it quick. Or otherwise you can just boil some potatoes in the pot and do it in the pot really quick. And then I make a no yeast like mayo roll it has mayonnaise in it and so we'll link that we'll write that up vegan mayonnaise of it's course. vegan mayonnaise yeah but i've got to remember to reduce the salt on the recipe because it gets really salty really quickly oh so um, reduce the salt yeah <laughs> but and then so you just have to like time it right i think you, you have it down to an art because yeah. it is amazing and i always g- <laughs> I like to give you a hard time because you usually go from like, I'm really tired. I don't feel like cooking. cooking. Yes. And then 45 I, minutes I later, what, like is all the, what are all those fries. smells? Yeah. Go in the kitchen. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> You've got things going on in here. Yeah, it is really out of nowhere. I'm like, I don't feel like it's either. I don't feel like cooking. Just get chicken and French fries or I'm making a feast. <laughs> So that happens sometimes. You could also do a simplified version of like the turkey cutlets with mashed potatoes Potatoes. and gravy. And yeah. And just a green bean casserole or something. Yeah. Or just green beans on the side. Or Or just green beans. Yeah. yeah. Like you don't have to make the cat. But sometimes we just, we all really love the green bean casserole. It's everyone's favorite part of that meal. So everyone would be sad if you made that. Yeah. So the green bean casserole, is that a recipe or is that a, you wing it? That is a recipe. Okay. And so we will have that link. That's great. And we're... We have a webinar that we're going to do mm-hmm. about holiday cooking, which I'm guessing we're going to include and highlight this green bean casserole yes. recipe because it's our favorite. And you used to make a green bean casserole that was not before we were vegan. vegan you yeah. made a vegetarian one mm-hmm. that we would take to our family gatherings for Thanksgiving and nobody liked it but us. Yeah. And so the boys were always happy because they could have as much green bean casserole at the uh, holidays as they wanted. But now, but now that the, we're vegan, yeah. you the first year you took the vegan one, everyone was like, oh, I like this now. I used yeah. to not like it before. And now it's a big hit and everyone likes it. Yeah. So. And that's the difference between if you're using canned or if you're you're not using making canned. it from scratch, if you're making it from scratch, so the canned was good. I, I grew up on the canned one, so I enjoyed it. Yeah, but. and so and then the stuffing is that a recipe? Is that a product? What do you do with that? Um, the stuffing I use Mrs. Cubbinson's stuffing, and I follow the recipe on the box. So it's really easy. You just have to use vegetable broth. Yep, you have right? to use vegetable broth. And this time I was actually randomly out of carrots. And so it was just onion and celery in the stuffing. And it looked really weird to me because I typically <laughs> like to add carrot. The orange, I like that pop of orange in. And I, sometimes I'll shred a carrot and I'll just do that. And sometimes I chop it into little cubes. Usually it's shredding because I'm trying to be quick. And for me, it just adds... I like the color. I don't know if it adds flavor. I'm sure it adds nutrients, but. <laughs> That's <it's>... <laughs> not what's important <laughs> in this case, apparently. <laughs> it's mainly the color because it, it did. It was still really tasty. It tasted good, the stuffing, but it just looked different without the carrot. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think Pepperidge Farm also has a vegan like bag stuffing. Mm-hmm. So Mrs. Cubinson's The Red Box is vegan. Pepperidge Farm has some vegan ones. And I think like maybe Whole Foods and Sprouts has some vegan stuffing. Like you have to watch for like chicken broth or something, chicken fat in them is what you're looking for. Yeah. Thanks. Good call. Yeah. So yeah, just vegetable broth. Definitely want vegetable broth. It says broth or water. Use the broth. (laughs) (laughs) Always go with broth. Yeah. And then the gravy, I think we have a recipe for that as well. 
And sometimes I do a mushroom gravy and sometimes I do an onion gravy. And so that's just like a brown mushroom gravy because you can also do like a white mushroom gravy. And there's a little bit of like, it's like broth and sauteed onion and seasoning and flour and like a little soy sauce to give it the brown color. And that's really delicious. The onion gravy is really good. It is. And if you like mushroom in it, just add some chopped up mushroom. And does the same thing. It's hard to go wrong with it. Yeah. All right. Cool. So those were all those meals. They, you know, kind of most of them rely on some faux meats Mm -hmm. a little bit. Or, you know, we gave some variations that don't have faux meats. For the last three, we're going to shift gears and talk about meals that don't use any faux meats at all. Yeah. I mean, of course, you could add faux meats to anything you want. But these ones typically don't need any of that. Right. So one of them is one of my favorites yes. is summer rolls. Yes, you love this. I'm really obsessed <laughs> with them. Rolling them is kind of labor intensive, but it's they're simple ingredients. It's right. mainly just veggies and noodles. Mm-hmm. And you need the rice paper sheets. And you need to practice with them a little bit. The trick, I think, is to not overfill them. <laughs> Which is my problem. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> the trick is to not make them half pound burrito style <laughs> summer rolls. <laughs> and then you just you want to get the sides up first you know what i mean yeah like you want to close the ends up first and then take the part that's close to you fold it over and then roll Mm -hmm. away from yourself yeah but if you use like different colored peppers it's so pretty it's yeah they look visually appealing yep I love the texture. Mm-hmm. And then we make a peanut sauce peanut to dip sauce them in. Is so good. Yes. It's so good. Yep. I could eat them every day. Yes, you could. And <laughs> they're healthy. And they're healthy. Yeah. So, highly recommend those. There's all there is a a recorded class on our YouTube channel uh, about those as well. And so that those are really good. So then we have this other meal, our next meal. We have a meal that we call Ninja Noodles. Mm -hmm. The boys named it that. Yeah. And then there's variations you could do with that, right? Yes. So that's using the... The ramen noodles. But not ramen like people typically think. Right. Not the little 10 cent no i mean i guess you could use it with that but ours the noodles that we use are rice ramen noodles right and we found we'll have to look at what the brand is we found it at costco and it's a larger bag of course because it's at costco and it's got like i think it's got a dozen little blocks blocks of the noodles but i've seen it at sprouts also so we'll figure out what that brand is It'll be linked. Yeah. And then the Ninja Noodles is, it's a variation of the recipe on the back of that that has just like noodles with sauce and like green onion in it. And I probably threw a couple other vegetables that I had in it. And it's kind of a savory with a hint of sweet sauce Mm -hmm. for the Ninja Noodles. And the boys really liked it. I like, I think I also threw cabbage in it that one time. Yeah, that sounds right. I think I I had some cabbage, so I probably threw some cabbage, some onion, the noodles, green onion, maybe not both onion. I don't remember exactly what was in it, but it's a variation of the recipe that's on the back. So you could just start with that Yeah, with some other vegetables thrown in. And then one night, randomly, I was like, I'll just do this and throw it, toss it in peanut sauce. And it was the noodles with veggies and peanut sauce, and it was super delicious everybody really yeah. liked it so this the same peanut sauce that we would make for the summer rolls you could just make that and throw it in your noodles with whatever vegetables mm-hmm. you know carrot pepper broccoli whatever whatever and it's like noodles with peanut sauce super yeah. good it was good and then i think the other night i did like a um stir fry sauce with these noodles and vegetables mm-hmm. and when we had like the little mini egg rolls on the side yeah and that was really delicious also. Yeah. And speaking of egg rolls, that's our <laughs> final meal idea yep. of the day is egg rolls and fried, fried rice, rice, which yep. we have kind of often. Yes. Because we found these egg rolls at Costco that are vegan, they're yep. frozen, and they're so good. And yeah. we can do them in the air fryer really quickly. 
And then and you, you just whip up some fried rice yep. on the side. Yeah. And or, the fried rice is so easy. Or the noodles on the side, like the stir fry noodles mm-hmm. that I figured out the other night. But typically it's fried rice because I can make that almost in my sleep also <laughs> lately. Yeah, I know. You do it really quick. I do. And I typically saute up some onion and then I throw the rice in to saute the rice. You fry the rice a little bit for <laughs> fried rice. And then I throw in, I just use, when I'm making it really quickly, I just use frozen mixed veggies and I throw them in there. And then I add, I do water for the fried rice, not broth. Or sometimes I might make a very diluted broth. And then I throw soy sauce in to give it that sort of brown color. And then you let it cook and that's it. Oh, sometimes I put herbs to province in it. Mm. That's the other trick. And sometimes you put tofu and yeah, sometimes to give it the like egg, eggy, egg, eggy thing. Yes. So sometimes jazz it up with a little bit of tofu. But usually, when usually I'm in not. a crunch, it's one of those like I need to get dinner on in like 30 minutes. It needs to be 30 minutes or less, and it's fried rice and egg rolls. Mm-hmm. So, but I also make homemade egg rolls, and with that, I typically put cabbage, onion, carrot, tofu. What else? Anything else? (laughs) I don't know. I think sometimes I like to do a mix of cabbage where it's green cabbage and purple cabbage because that is really colorful. But otherwise, sometimes I just grab a bag of coleslaw from the grocery store and I grab the egg roll wrappers and some tofu and I do that and then I roll up the egg rolls and cook them. Then a very another variation of egg rolls is Southwest egg rolls. Mm, mm -hmm. And that is usually like Spanish rice with pinto or black beans. It's usually black beans. Spanish rice, cilantro, corn, and put that in the egg roll. And then you make queso with our cheese sauce. So you take (laughs) the cheese sauce and some salsa and you put the two together. And then you've got Southwest egg rolls to dip with the cheese sauce. It's really good. We were obsessed with them the first time you made yeah, them. You and the were. egg roll wrappers, you just buy them at like Sprouts or whatever. Yeah, you find at Walmart. Them. Mm-hmm. All right. That's good to know. So those are our 15 additional meal ideas that go good for lunch or dinner. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you got some new ideas, new inspiration. Of course, all the recipes and products will be linked in the show notes. Reach out with questions. Any final words of wisdom? Enjoy your food. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I hope you like it. I hope you think some of these are as yummy as we think they are. Yeah. And we'd like to know which are your favorites. So with that, we will sign off and see you next time. Thanks for joining us. We release new episodes every two weeks. You can always email us at plantbased at apnm.org. Check out our website, apnm.org slash plantbased for classes, recipes, and more resources. See you in two weeks.